So let's talk about how to run a correlation in JASP. And the first thing I want to point out is when I've pulled my data over from a CSV file, I want to first ensure that my data are set up appropriately. And so test score came over as numbers, but you can see that study hours came over as a nominal data. That's what this Venn diagram means. So we want to change this to ensure that we can do the proper analysis. So you click on that Venn diagram and change it to scale. So again, as we did with t-tests or ANOVA, you have to make sure your data are properly labeled so that you can do the appropriate tests. Otherwise, you won't be able to do what you need to do. So now we have both of these numbers, and that's really the, the essence behind a correlation is that we're correlating two numbers. We no longer have conditions. And so the first thing we're going to do is to run a correlation is click on regression. Now that may not make sense at the forefront because you're thinking, well, we're learning correlation. Why would we click on something called regression? But as we move forward with the lectures, you're going to find out that correlation and regression are really, they go hand in hand. They really are synonymous. It's kind of like ANOVA and post hoc. They really have to be done together. But I have to teach you one piece at a time. So let me teach you the correlation piece. But then once we learn regression, you're going to see, wow, they really do go hand in hand. So we're going to click on regression, and then I'm going to click on correlation matrix. Now, a matrix, other than a cool movie, is um, really a table of values kind of like a um, multiplication table. If you can remember when you were a kid and you had a multiplication table where you went 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 across the top and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 down the side and then you kind of paired them up. Um, that's what we're building here with our correlation matrix. Now we only have two variables so the matrix is going to be quite simple but if we had a list of say 20 variables we'd have 20 variables listed across the top of the table and 20 variables listed across the side and then we would be able to pair each of them up. So this is a, a table of all paired comparisons and um, <clears throat> again this one will be quite simple because we only have the two variables but in many studies we'll have multiple variables that we might have here. So we're going to put our two variables over here to be correlated in this open box. And now I want to explain what the results are indicating to you. So as with the table with the multiplication table, if you can remember back in the day when it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, there was repeated values, right? So we had 1 times 1 up here, and then we might have had 1 times 1 on the side. And so here is kind of like multiplying. We are saying study hours related to test score. See how this is study hours, and we connect it to test score. And this is blank. And this is blank because we have test score related to study hours. You see how that would be repeated numbers? So rather than confusing people by having the same numbers represented twice, they leave it blank. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter whether it's study and then test score first or uh, test score and study first, right? So these are the same um, connecting uh, paired comparisons. So that's why this box is blank and this one is not. It's just because it would be a repeated set of numbers. Now comparing study hours to study hours doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's why there's a dash here. Comparing test score to test score wouldn't make any sense. So that's why there's a dash here. So really the only values that we're really interested in is comparing test scores and study hours here. So in our lecture, we learned about calculating the Pearson's R and this is our Pearson's R calculation. It's 0 0.707. So this is kind of our, our statistical calculation here. Like when we had a T calculated or F calculated, this would be the same kind of um, concept here. We have our Pearson's R calculated. And then we also have the P value for our Pearson's R. Now P value is interpreted the same way here as it was with all of our previous tests. Anything less than 0.05 signifies that it is a um, significant relationship. So what we now know is that study hours is significantly related to test score. And it is a positive relationship because it is a positive 0 0.707. If it had been negative 0 0.707, it would have been a negative relationship. So we can interpret this positive relationship to say that the more hours you someone studies predicts higher test scores. Okay, so now we're going to put this all back into a bigger picture and um, then next week we're going to learn about regression and you'll see how we can make regression do even more uh, informative pieces for us so we can really start to say how many hours do I need to study to get the different kinds of test scores I think I would like.